December 26, 2024, China shocks the world by unveiling not one, but two cutting-edge aircraft that could reshape the future of aerial warfare. The message from Beijing is clear. The game has changed. The media called it China's leap into the future. Military experts called it a wake-up call. But here's what they missed. Four years earlier, in a classified American test facility, something extraordinary had already taken flight. The Pentagon had secretly built and tested their own next-generation fighter. The future of aerial warfare had begun, not with a public announcement, but in the shadows. The United States claims they've already flown their next-generation fighter. China just revealed theirs to the world. But who's really ahead in this high-stakes game of aerospace dominance? Welcome to the world of sixth-generation fighters, where the future of air power is being decided right now in secret facilities on both sides of the Pacific. What makes a fighter sixth generation? To understand the quantum leap that sixth-generation fighters represent, let's look at today's most advanced combat aircraft. The F-22 Raptor, with its incredible radar cross-section of just 0.0001 square meters, making it appear no bigger than a marble on enemy radar. The F-35's sophisticated sensor suite that can track 23 different air and ground targets simultaneously. China's J-20, capable of supercruising at Mach 1.8, and Russia's Su-57, which can pull stunning 9G maneuvers while carrying weapons externally. These fifth-generation marvels already pushed the boundaries of what seems possible, but they're about to become yesterday's news. Let's talk stealth. The F-22's radar-absorbing materials need to be maintained after every few flights, and the Su-57's engine nozzles still create a significant infrared signature. Even the J-20, despite its distinctive sawtooth edges and diverterless supersonic inlets, can be detected by advanced low-frequency radars. Sixth-generation fighters will fundamentally change this equation. Their metamaterials won't just absorb radar waves, they'll actively redirect them. Remember those distinctive vertical stabilizers you see on every fighter today? The F-22 needs them for maneuverability, the Su-57 uses them for thrust vectoring, but they're also massive radar reflectors. Sixth-gen fighters will eliminate them entirely, using advanced flight control systems and artificial intelligence to maintain stability. The result? An aircraft with a radar cross-section so small, it practically disappears into the background radiation of space itself. The digital brain. Today's F-35 processes 400 billion instructions per second, more than any other fighter in history. It can detect and track multiple threats, suggest optimal attack solutions, and even automate countermeasures. Impressive, until you realize what's coming next. Sixth-generation fighters will utilize quantum computing and neural networks to process information at rates measured in quadrillions of operations per second. While the Su-57's artificial intelligence can suggest basic tactical decisions, sixth-gen AI will be able to coordinate entire battle strategies in real time. We're talking about systems that can predict enemy tactics before they execute them control up to 100 autonomous drones simultaneously, compared to the F-35's capability to coordinate with just four other aircraft, process sensor data from an entire theater of operations, not just local airspace. Breaking the speed barrier. Current fighters show us the limits of traditional engine design. The F-22's F-119 engines produce 35,000 pounds of thrust each, enabling it to supercruise at Mach 1.5. The Su-57's AL-41 F-1 engines allow it to hit Mach 2 with afterburners, but at the cost of massive fuel consumption and heat signature. Even the J-20's WS-15 engines, while impressive, still face the fundamental trade-off between speed and stealth. Sixth-generation adaptive cycle engines will rewrite these rules. They'll be able to switch between high thrust and high efficiency modes in flight, potentially enabling sustained speeds above Mach 3 while maintaining stealth. More importantly, they'll generate up to 10 times the electrical power of current engines, crucial for powering energy weapons and advanced sensors. Star Wars becomes reality. The F-35 can carry 18,000 pounds of weapons. The Su-57 boasts 12 hardpoints for missiles and bombs. But sixth-generation fighters will carry something far more advanced, directed energy weapons capable of engaging targets at the speed of light. While today's fighters rely on countermeasure systems like the F-22's AN-ALR-94 radar warning receiver or the J-20's EOTS-86 electro-optical targeting system, 6th Gen fighters will mount 1 megawatt class lasers capable of shooting down incoming missiles or disabling enemy electronics. 
Think that sounds like science fiction? The Air Force Research Lab has already demonstrated a ground-based laser system that can track and destroy multiple incoming missiles. Now, they're working to shrink that technology to fit inside a fighter. The Connected Warrior The F-35's much-touted data fusion can combine information from its own sensors and share it with other F-35s through the MADEL system. The Su-57 uses the S-111 communication system to coordinate with other Russian aircraft. But sixth-generation fighters will operate on an entirely different level. Imagine a single fighter coordinating with swarms of up to 1,000 autonomous drones. The Pentagon's current record is 100. Real-time satellite data from military and commercial networks, ground, sea, and space-based sensors across thousands of miles. Joint forces across the entire battle space. The military calls this mosaic warfare, where each platform becomes a node in a vast, adaptable network. We've seen glimpses of this with the F-35's ability to control a few drones, but 6th Gen fighters will be true battle network commanders. When you combine all these capabilities, true all aspects stealth, quantum computing AI, hypersonic speed, directed energy weapons, and complete battlefield integration, you're not looking at just another new fighter. You're looking at a revolution in aerial warfare, as profound as the jump from propellers to jets. But which country will be the first to turn this vision into reality? That's where our story gets interesting. China's New Dragons On December 26, 2024, Mao Zedong's birthday, China unveiled not just one, but two revolutionary aircraft that sent shockwaves through the aviation world. Let's break down what we can see, what remains mysterious, and most importantly, whether these truly qualify as sixth-generation fighters. First up is what analysts are calling the Flying Dorito, a massive diamond-shaped aircraft that was spotted flying alongside a J-20 stealth fighter. Its size is striking, with a length comparable to the 70-foot J-20. This is no lightweight interceptor. But what makes this aircraft truly revolutionary is its unique three-engine configuration. Look closely at the intakes, two underneath and one on top of the fuselage. This unprecedented arrangement has sparked intense speculation. Some experts suggest it's needed to power such a massive airframe, while others theorize the top intake could feed a ramjet or scramjet engine for hypersonic flight. The aircraft's most visible features tell us a lot about its capabilities. A tailless design that significantly reduces radar signature, advanced flight control surfaces, five separate surfaces on each wing's trailing edge, Robust landing gear with twin-wheel bogies, suggesting significant payload capacity. Large internal weapons bays, visible in the fuselage. But what truly stands out are those flight control surfaces. During test flights, the outer surfaces were seen fully extended, likely acting as speed brakes, a feature that's actually quite unusual in modern fly-by-wire aircraft. This suggests an innovative approach to flight control in the absence of traditional vertical stabilizers. The second aircraft, spotted being escorted by a J-16 fighter, presents a different approach entirely. This twin-engine design features a more traditional fighter configuration, albeit still without vertical tails. Its cranked arrow wing design bears similarities to early American NGAD concepts, suggesting a focus on maneuverability and stealth rather than pure payload capacity. Notable features include Diverterless Supersonic Inlets DSI, with highly angular shaping, a deep diamond-shaped fuselage cross-section, sharply swept wings with distinctive trailing edge extensions, more conventional single-wheel landing gear. But here's where things get interesting, and where the biggest questions remain. For both aircraft, we still don't know. The composition and capabilities of their sensor suites, the type and sophistication of their avionics, their actual stealth characteristics across different radar bands, the presence of internal weapons bays and their capacity, the nature of their propulsion systems beyond visual configuration, most crucially, their ability to integrate with autonomous systems and process battlefield data. So are these truly sixth generation fighters? The answer isn't simple. The visible features, like tailless designs, advanced stealth shaping, and potential for high subsonic crews, certainly tick some boxes. But the true mark of a sixth generation fighter isn't in its shape or size. It's in its brain. These capabilities can't be determined from external observation alone. What we're seeing could be anything from technology demonstrators to prototype sixth-generation aircraft to something entirely different, perhaps even a new class of regional strike aircraft. What we do know is that China has made a bold statement with these reveals. But as we'll see next, the United States isn't standing still.
America's three-pronged response. While China's recent unveiling made headlines, here's a surprising twist. America has been quietly revolutionizing aerial warfare since 2020. As then Air Force Acquisition Chief Will Roper revealed, we've already built and flown a full-scale flight demonstrator in the real world, and we broke records in doing it. The Next Generation Air Dominance Program represents America's most visible response to China's ambitions. But here's what most people don't know. The Air Force has already flight-tested not one, but three different demonstrators, believed to be from Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman. All of this happened in complete secrecy, with no public images ever released. The investment is staggering. $2.74 billion requested for fiscal year 2025, with plans for $19.6 billion through 2029, plus another $9 billion for autonomous wingman drones. But there's a catch that sent shockwaves through the Pentagon. Each NGAD fighter could cost up to $300 million, nearly four times the price of an F-35. Meanwhile, the U.S. Navy is developing its own answer to China's advances. The FAXX program aims to defend carrier groups operating in contested waters, potentially within range of China's growing anti-ship capabilities. Unlike the Air Force's NGAD, which prioritizes deep penetration into enemy airspace, the FAXX must balance stealth with the brutal demands of carrier operations. But here's where the story takes an unexpected turn. Northrop Grumman, the B-21's manufacturer, has made a bold claim. The Raider isn't just a bomber. It's the world's first operational sixth-generation combat aircraft. This isn't just marketing talk. As Air Force General Scott Plus noted, if we were to characterize it as a fighter, we would be thinking too narrowly. The B-21's capabilities are revolutionary. It can operate as an airborne command center, managing drone swarms and coordinating attacks. Its massive payload capacity could launch salvos of long-range air-to-air missiles. Its advanced AI and sensor suite rival or exceed planned fighter capabilities. Its stealth characteristics are believed to be unprecedented. Air Force Chief of Staff General David Alvin recently revealed something even more intriguing. They're actively considering expanding the B-21's role to take on some NGAD missions. We have not taken that off the table, he stated in October 2024. And here's the kicker. While China shows off prototypes, America is already putting its next revolution into production. The B-21 Raider is already under low-rate initial production at Northrop Grumman's facilities, with the first aircraft having completed its maiden flight. However, at the moment, the Pentagon faces what might be its most crucial strategic decision in decades. With the NGAD program's $300 million per unit cost triggering a fundamental review, America's response could reshape aerial warfare in three distinct ways. The first option maintains the original vision, proceed with the high-cost but revolutionary NGAD program. This path promises unmatched capabilities, but fleet size would likely be very limited, potentially even smaller than the F-22 fleet. And when each aircraft represents such a significant investment, losing even one in combat becomes strategically costly. The second path explores something unprecedented, expanding the B-21 Raider's role into air dominance. As Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin revealed, the B-21 is multifunctional. It can handle anything from gathering intel to battle management. But it's the third option that's generating the most interest within the Air Force, a hybrid force. This approach would combine a smaller fleet of NGAT fighters with B-21s and autonomous systems, creating a flexible mix of capabilities. Regardless of the path chosen, America's response to China's sixth-generation challenge may redefine conventional expectations, suggesting that the future of aerial warfare could move beyond the traditional fighter jet altogether. The race for air superiority isn't just about building better fighters anymore. It's about reimagining aerial warfare itself. While China makes headlines with public displays, America's advantage remains clear. Three flying NGAD demonstrators, the FAXX program in development, and the B-21 Raider already in production. But China's rapid progress sends an unmistakable message. The gap is closing faster than anyone expected. Yet in modern warfare, no nation fights alone. The true measure of air power isn't just what you can build, it's who stands beside you. And that's where our story takes its most fascinating turn. Global Race for Air Dominance China and America aren't developing their sixth-generation fighters in isolation. Both nations are part of wider alliances, each pursuing their own advanced fighter programs. Let's see how these partnerships shape the future of air warfare. America's allies are pushing boundaries with their own sixth-generation developments. 
The Global Combat Air Program GCAP unites the United Kingdom, Italy, and Japan in an ambitious project. Their fighter, evolving from Britain's Tempest concept, aims for service entry by 2035. What makes this collaboration significant is the combination of British radar expertise, Italian manufacturing capabilities, and Japanese electronics innovation, all aligned with American technical standards. Meanwhile, another European initiative, the Future Combat Air System, brings together France, Germany, and Spain. Their program, while independent, shares intelligence and technology insights with American developers. Expected to enter service by 2040, the FKS represents another piece in the Western sixth-generation puzzle. On the other side, China's primary aerospace partner, Russia, has announced its own sixth-generation program, the PAC-DP. However, Western sanctions and technical challenges have slowed its development. While Russia and China share some technology, their fighter programs remain largely separate, limiting the benefits of collaboration. Pakistan, another Chinese ally, benefits from technology transfer but isn't developing its own sixth-generation fighter. Instead, it serves as a testing ground for Chinese innovations and manufacturing techniques. This network of development programs reveals a crucial advantage. While China's sixth-generation efforts remain relatively isolated, America's program exists within an ecosystem of allied projects. Each program shares insights, reduces individual development costs, and creates a common standard for future air warfare. The winner of the sixth-generation race won't be determined by a single aircraft program, but by the combined strength of allied development efforts. While China has made impressive strides, America and its allies are developing not just one, but multiple paths to sixth-generation air dominance. In this crucial measure, the Western alliance maintains its edge, even as the technological gap continues to narrow.